Okay, so the husbands come out, right? And Andy is trying to make small talk. He's trying to make small talk. Um, and he gets to Chris Samuels, and Chris ain't having it. He asks, Andy asks about the Michael Jordan uh, documentary that came out some time ago. And Chris was like, you know, I was too busy uh, watching lies being spread by my wife. Where was you watching them at? Because the, none of it was mentioned on the show. None of it was mentioned on the show. So where, where, where was you watching it at, Chris Samuels? Where was you watching the lies at? Maybe on Gigi's live, maybe? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know where you was watching them at. But okay, boo. Uh, go off, sis. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the Ocephos. Uh, all I put for them is Eddie is fine. It, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Eddie looked better than Juan. I'm just going to go ahead and say it because his complexion, that melanated complexion, him and Wendy with their deep complexions, I love it. Um, I love how Ray got Karen together when talking about their finances. So when Karen had told the ladies that she wanted her um, money back from when she helped them pay off them taxes, he said, good luck. <laughs> he told her, good luck, motherfucker. I've been giving you a stipend. Okay, for all these years, plus many of credit cards that you ain't paid for. Motherfucker, you owe me that goddamn money. That's the least you can do is help me out on motherfucking taxes. Okay, she got he got her ass together in so many ways. Um them making the joke about Chris Samuels making the joke with about Monique giving him head or something like that. Uh I at first I thought it was disrespectful. However, I I can kind of see how it's just a joke. It, it's just a joke. Okay. Um, what may be inappropriate in someone else's marriage, I might not deem inappropriate. Sometimes if y'all hear me, how me and my husband talk to each other, talk to each other, I can't speak. Y'all will probably think that we have so many issues in our marriage. No, that's just, that's just how we are with each other. We just, we don't take too many things seriously. So it's like, so I got what he was saying from that. Um... Uh, Giselle brings the security guard again 20 on 10 20 on 10 what you bring the security guard for Giselle Chris Samuels ain't the brightest bulb in the sky but he ain't the damn he ain't he ain't stupid enough to put his hands on somebody especially a woman on national television Jamal had said that um you know Chris Samuels had gotten real you know angry with Giselle and, and Robin and that the 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 security guard had to subdue him. I, I didn't I didn't see that. I didn't see that. He did go back and forth with the ladies, but what bothered me about that was they wasn't letting him talk. They was not letting Chris talk and I felt like it was important for them to let him talk. So of course he hasn't been able to say what he wanted to say. Um, even though it's been two and a half years, he hasn't been able to say what he wants to say. So now was his opportunity. And I feel like they should have, Robin and Giselle should have let him say what he wanted to say. Say his piece. You know, let the motherfucker say his piece. Um, so they get on the whole Chris saying that if he was Bruce Jenner, he would slap the dog shit out of these women. And that they was, they was tricks. Okay, it was tricks. And, you know, uh, first of all, it's Caitlyn Jenner, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not even about to go into all of that. Um, first of all, to call these women tricks, I'm like, and then to go, to go and threaten them, because over a rumor that you knew about prior to this season. Okay, that this is what I don't understand. I think I wrote it down here. Yes, I did write it down here. Why does Chris get to bring up the rumor from two and a half years ago, but Candace can't cry about a fight that happened a year ago? Now, why is that? Let me cross that out because I already asked. I want to ask it again. Why is that? And can y'all com uh, comment down below and let me know why it's okay for Chris to be mad about a rumor that happened two and a half years ago? Because later on in the episode, we found out that Robin and Giselle had a conversation about the rumor. And 
Giselle said the rumor had been out for like a year and a half at that time. So by this time, it's like two years, okay? And not only that, you have let this woman in your house. You knew what, you didn't know Giselle was talking about it on the show, but you knew she planned on talking about it. You let her in the house. And you let her in your house that you live in, in the lake house. You let her around your baby and you let her in your car. So I'm not understanding what's all this pent up aggression for now. They, they, this shit goes back all the way to season three. Like I'm not understanding what, and y'all make such a big deal about Candace crying about a fight that happened a year ago. But we're not even discussing about the fact that this rumor was two and a half years ago. You'd have been all up in these women's faces, key, key, key and shit with them. And now it, now you want to be all angry and hit and pent up and shit. Get the fuck out of here with all that bullshit. Anyway, um, they played Chris's live, whatever. Chris Samuels addresses Candace and asks Candace, why didn't you, if you and Monique were supposed to be friends, why didn't you tell her? Candace's response was, I didn't tell her because there's so many rumors that's out there about everybody. If I if I tell her that rumor, then that means, you know, I, I will be talking about every rumor, okay? Um, I don't know if I buy that excuse, uh, Candace. I, I don't know why. I can't really say why Candace did not tell Monique. I also know that Monique in that same live where Candace was, where uh, Chris was talking about stomping the women, that Monique said that she does not, only person that she speaks to on this show outside of filming is Karen and I think she said Ashley. That's it. So my whole thing is how good of friends do you think we, how good of friends are they that she would tell you something like that? That's number one. Number two, I don't understand why we're making a big deal about Candace not telling Monique when she told Karen, who is Mo, who is both friends with uh, Monique and Candace. And when Monique asked her about it, she didn't lie. She didn't leave out anything. She said ex exactly what happened. So I'm not understanding that. So if y'all can, again, if y'all, if, if I'm wrong, let me know, comment below and we'll talk about it. Um, Chris Bassett then talks about a blogger that has spoken on his children. And this is another thing that I want to address, right? So a lot of y'all want to say that Candace wished death on a blogger. This blogger was talking about his, about her husband's children, her stepchildren, and he did it for months. He harassed her for months on behalf of Monique. And she didn't say shit. Monique, uh, Candace didn't say shit to this blogger until one day she got her ass on that live. And guess she said something that she may not have said. But motherfucker, you, I've had enough. Okay, you've bullied me. You have talked about my son's children, my husband's children. And now I've had enough. You've done too much. I'm not going to take more of your, your side. That's what it is. Cyber bullying. Okay, when you're constantly coming for somebody's neck, that is what happens. That's what it's called, cyberbullying, and that's what that blogger did. God bless his soul, trust me. But while he was here on earth, he did some things that were fucked up, okay? And that's just what it is. And can that situation with Candace was one of them. And for Monique to say, well, what does that have to do with us? How the hell are you going to be mad at them for talking about your kids, but you're okay with a friend of yours talking about somebody else's kids? Make that make sense. You were good friends with this person. And if you wanted to shut it down, you could have told them, hey, I know you support me, but don't talk about their kids. Because if they talk about my kids, my husband going to get upset. And that's exactly what the fuck he did. So stop it. Um, at some point, Chris Bassett and Chris Samuels argue. And I think it's because Chris Bassett, and he did do this, he yelled at Monique. He did do that. He did do that. And Chris Bassett, Chris Samuels, which I expect him to do, stood up and was like, hey. But I also feel like if Chris Samuels can address Candace, then Bassett can address Monique. He didn't yell. He shouldn't have yelled at her. That was disrespectful. It was. But I don't know, y'all. It was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> Candace then explains to Chris Samuels that you know, what I just basically said 
And he said it was bullshit. He wasn't buying it. I don't know. So why the fuck did you ask me then? If if you anything she would have said, Chris Samuels would have thought was bullshit. So I don't. What the fuck you asked me that for? Don't ask me, nigga. Um. Then he addresses the ladies and he asks them. He says, "Do did he goes to Robin? Did you do it?" She said, "No." Candace, did you do it? He said, "No." Giselle, the best for last. Did you do it? She said, "Don't fucking talk to me." <laughs> don't fucking talk to me. He said, "Woo," and then yeah. yeah. It was just a lot. It was it was a fucking lot. Um, after that, Juan and Robin, I didn't really care. I didn't really care. Good, you know, good job from the, for them. Wonderful, love it. All roses and peaches, and you know, best of wishes to you. Don't care. Karen and Robin talking about embellished. Again, I don't care. I don't care. Um. Karen was full of shit when she said that she liked that hat. She threw it on the floor. She tried to act like she was unbothered at the time that uh, Robin didn't want her to wear the hat. And she, actually, she was bothered. So, because she mentioned it was for a storyline. But, okay, girl. Did I miss something? No, I didn't. I didn't miss something. Okay, so, Michael commenting on Juan proposing to Robin... Uh, Ashley said that he was just saying that because of past behaviors with Juan. I I think it's fucking weird. Like I like, first of all, why that's some female type trait. You know that is a female trait. Why are you over here gossiping about women shit? Like, Michael, shut the fuck up. Like I, I don't understand. I don't get it. Like I don't get. This is the reason why I didn't want. I didn't want Monique fired because I do not feel like it is okay to bring back Ashley and therefore bring back Michael every season and to fire Monique. That's the reason why I did not want Monique fired. Because I just think Michael is it's it's too much now. You have proof on camera that he grabbed on somebody that he had no business doing it. Why is he still going to be on the show? Because from what I know, everyone gonna be on the show. Well. Monique quit, but we'll talk about that later. She was, why is he going to still be on the show? It's, to me, that is sexual harassment. And you keep laying down with a man and having babies with a man who like other men. Men, women, rabbits, dogs, whatever you, whatever he prefers at the time. Uh, Chris and Robin get into it. Uh, I was confused as to why Robin was getting so hyped up. Because it just seemed to come out of left field and it came nowhere. I don't know whether they chopped it up or they edited it. Or she just got mad for no fucking reason. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, because he said he didn't care. He didn't care. I mean, it doesn't really seem like Chris and Juan are good friends. So I don't understand why she got in her feelings. And if, if you, I'm so glad that Juan Dixon is not here. Like, it wasn't that serious. I, I really feel like in during this reunion, uh... Robin just wanted something to say and wanted something to talk about. That's how I feel. Chris says it's disgusting that people were plotting on his child. And when it when he grows up, he will see it. The child was his kids will see that some people were plotting uh, on his mom because they didn't like his mom. Um, Chris, your kids are going to see your wife fighting people on national television. Okay. Your children are going to go on social media and see Gigi speaking on a situation between her mom, between their mom and the trainer. Chris, your children are going to hear a song that your wife did bragging about hitting another, hitting someone. So for me, the plot did for me, and I know I'm going off subject here. I think what happened was it was a conversation between all of them that they had, they keep saying that I, it, during this time, it was a lot of confusion. Uh, Freaking Giselle said that they brought it up. And actually he did brought it up when he met, when they went to, when Giselle went to their house, he told Giselle, uh, is that your first time looking at my baby? You know, he looked just like me and Giselle's like, well, who else would he look like? So it just, this is what Giselle said. Giselle said that she thought it was part of the storyline. We don't know if she's telling the truth or not. However, comma, stop with this bullshit narrative that Candace 
started the Poe plot thing because she didn't. I see a lot of people saying, oh, they played Chris threatening the females, but they never played Candace live where she admitted there was a plot because she was answering a question to a fan who said that Monique is the one who started the word plot. Go, go on Twitter, go follow Erica De Niro TV on Twitter. I think her name is Sweet Face or something like that. On Twitter, there is a video of Monique's live when her, she supposedly found that fucking stupid ass bird and she said the word plot first and then Candace followed up with it. I don't, I mean, this, I, I'm so tired of explaining this. Y'all just want something, y'all just want to pin something on Candace so bad so we can justify Monique's behavior. Instead of saying the girl is wrong, it's not. It's nobody's fault. It's not Andy's fault for holding her account for holding her accountable. It's not Candace's fault for for Monique putting her hands on her. It's, it's no one's fault. Please hold this woman accountable. She did, it took her so long to hold herself accountable because y'all dumbass fans was praising her for some shitty behavior. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um. Chris walks off because he said he played chess, not checkers. Shut the fuck up. Like, just shut your big Thanksgiving built turkey looking ass on some. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, just get your punk ass off the goddamn stage. All, all I got to do is kick you on your knees and you done. You done for the rest of the fucking, uh, rest of the fucking season. I'm going to whoop your, your wife's ass too while I'm at it. See, they, <laughs> let me tell you, I know I'm going off, but. They could not have me on a reality television show. They could not have me. Because had I been Giselle and Monique was like, you ain't talking to my husband. I said, bitch, I am talking to your husband. And I'm doing it right in front of you. What the fuck you about to do? This ain't Candace. Stop fucking playing with me. Anyway. Um, Chris B. And Ashley discuss uh, the situation at Robin and Juan's party where Chris Bassett and, and uh, Michael get into it. Um, I agree with everything Chris Bassett said. Period. Okay. Um, no one has said any salacious things about Michael. Okay. There wouldn't be shit to talk about if Michael wouldn't do the shit that he did. Okay. Honestly, Ashley wouldn't even have a fucking storyline if she wasn't married to Michael. Because, I mean, what she got going on? What business she got? I heard she got some little yoga shit, but I don't see her promoting it on the show. I mean, what else she got going on besides being Mrs. Michael Darby and having two kids by him? So she ought to thank her lucky stars for Michael because he is the one that's keeping her on this fucking show, unfortunately. Anyway, I, I was here for what everything Chris said. He got her ass together in the most respectful manner. I was here for everything he said. Um... The husbands walk off, Chris Bassett and Chris Samuels, they have a little discussion. You know, they basically say, hey, we know they can't be friends with me. You always going to be cool. We good. Uh, <laughs> Before that, no, no, I'm, I, let me go back. Let me go back. So Andy asks a question about Chris and Chris Bassett and Chris Samuels friendship. And they both just said, basically, if their wives can't be friends, that's okay. You know, they always going to be cool. They always going to be cordial. It's unfortunate. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Ray mentioned something about him and Karen celebrating the 25th anniversary. Uh, who cares? Uh, very performative. All very performative. Uh, Chris Samuels. <laughs> Chris Samuels thanks Monique for being a real woman. The real reason why he ain't say it, why she wasn't talking about this rumor is for the protection of his son. <laughs> then the motherfucker cry, y'all. When I tell y'all, I busted out laughing. Like, are you are you really crying right now? <laughs> it was it was so funny and performative to me. When Ken Candace has been a crybaby, she has been a crybaby since season three when she first got us. Yeah, well, season three when she first got here. Candace has consistently cried, okay? Um, there was no tear. When he got up from Monique, from hugging Monique and doing all that bull stuff, he there was no tears, okay? There was no tears. And Giselle, that's the one time I agree with Giselle, no tears, okay? And then it, it wasn't genuine because in his 
in his while he was professing his love to his wife and just praising her for being this strong woman, this great mama stuff, he still found the need to shit on Giselle. So it just wasn't genuine. It was all performative. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. I wasn't buying it. I died laughing. I did. Um, the the men leave. Um, Chris Bassett and Chris Samuels have a moment once they walk off set. You know, they basically pieced it up. Hey, dude, we cool. I, maybe I want to be friends somewhere in the future, but me and you going to always be cool. That's good. That's what men do. Men don't, don't do all that shit. Uh, Andy goes around the room and, you know, everyone talks about the season and, and that's, that's it. Uh, I had some more stuff. So, I already talked about the Samuels knowing about this rumor three years ago around season three and they, they still allowed Giselle in their home. So, this outrage, this, this, this being mad about something for me is all a deflection on the core of the goddamn rumor. And the core of the rumor is there was something inappropriate going on between Monique and the trainer. And while the, and when Monique got pregnant, Chris Samuels is the one that questioned it. Everyone thinking it's the youngest child is actually the one that she miscarried, according to Gigi. Okay. That's why she keeps saying that it's not a miscarriage, it's actually an abortion. I don't know how true that is. Y'all go watch it on YouTube. Uh, Gigi did a live. I, I don't I don't know how true that is. Uh I believe she I don't believe everything she's saying is um a lie, but I also don't think everything she's saying is is true. Uh why does everything Monique say you all automatically believe? I think I've addressed this already. Why does everything Monique say y'all automatically believe? Why does everything Karen say y'all automatically believe? These women, these two in particular, are the ones that lie constantly. Ashley is messy. She is. She's messy as fuck. She ain't never lied, but she messy as fuck, okay? Candace cries so goddamn much. She got a mouth on her. Her mouth is so-called reckless. She ain't never goddamn lied, okay? Now, um, Giselle questionable. She, she questionable. She questionable, but she, but she don't, Karen and Monique have been the consistent liars of the group, but y'all so ready to gobble up everything that they say. It's really stupid. Um, Monique has said she quit the show. Last night, she said that she was done. That she, no, she was over it, is what she said. She said she was over it. <clears throat> However, this more and at, but when she said she was over it, I didn't take that as her saying she was done. I think she was teasing y'all. That's what I thought it was. But this morning I saw a clip of her on some little Fox 5 DMV bullshit. And she said she's done with the show. We'll see. We'll see. I, I think she'll be done this season. But if she's done this season, she'll definitely come back another season. Because her fans are that... Her fans are like Trump fans, like I've said. You know, they're like Trump supporters. And they're going to make a big fuss about her not being on, ne about her not being on the next season. And they're going to try, they'll make such a big fuss and they'll probably end up bringing her back. And she'll come back. She'll come back. What else she got going on? Y'all love to say the women are so jealous of Monique and her lifestyle. And they want her lifestyle. But every season she Every season since she's been on this show, the one thing that she's consistently done is complain about her lifestyle, okay? Her husband don't do this. She tired. Her kids be running her fucking crazy. But they all jealous of her lifestyle that she seemingly does not want, okay? Hence why she was at the club with the trainer, according to Gigi. Um, that's it, you guys. Um, I really didn't want Monique to quit. Let me say this. I really didn't want Monique to quit because I would have loved to see uh, a reconciliation between her and Candace. I would have loved to see it. But she said she's not coming back. She done everyone mad at Andy. They think he did it. Whatever the fuck. I, I don't care. I really don't care. I mean, quiet as it's kept, the only one on the show who really got something going on as far as entertainment is Ashley and, and Michael. The only two. What what was Monique giving besides the fight? What was Candace giving besides the fight? Wendy was giving you her four degrees and her children. Giselle was giving you a fake story. <laughs> 
what Karen was giving you wigs and a fake marriage that was broken up storyline. Robin was giving you em embezzled and in wine and in taxes. Okay. None of them really bring anything so much so that this whole fight was everybody's storyline. Okay. Nobody gave anything. So that is all you guys for the Real Housewives of Potomac season five reunion part three review. Please like, share, comment below, and you guys have a good evening.